Welcome back. We are continuing our adventures in food labeling. And today we are going to be modifying allergen and ingredient declarations in ESHA. And so at the end of this video, you will be able to modify your allergen and ingredient declarations in ESHA. Surprise! And you'll edit component labeling in ESHA. And so if you haven't started on your ESHA journey, do make sure to go back to some of the beginning videos because we're going to jump ahead and uh, assume that you already know how to make a basic recipe in Esha. So at this point, I realize I always joke and say we are friends. I'm not going to edit this out, but uh, I have preloaded Splash Top for us and I have pre-established a recipe for us. So let me jump back to my recipe. Um, so one comment, um, we had a comment about the fact that it is a pain in the rear end to see the ESHA software. And I do want to recommend that you jump into the view options and jump it out to original scale. Um, some of us, uh, Robert and I were talking, Robert and I are, we're not spring chickens. <laughs> and we were saying, hey, you know what? Uh, it, plugging your computer into a larger monitor. If you don't have a larger monitor, you may be able to use an HDMI cable from your computer into your television. Many people have televisions that de facto are computer monitors. And so consider uh, playing around with some different creative ideas so that you can increase the size of what you're looking at here. So I, I uh, did my kale coleslaw with some fresh chopped carrots. We've got some kale, we've got some hemp seeds, we've got some salad dressing, and we've got some pumpkin seeds. And right now I have it up here in the spreadsheet format. And um, I'm going to go back to the recipe tab here. Those are the reports. Let's go back to the recipe. And if I click on view label, boom, there we go. So it, there's my nutrition label. Now, wait a second, I should be changing my serving size. And we talked about that uh, in a previous video to adjust my serving size back to the reference serving amount or based off of the package contents. Um, and we've got my ingredients up here. So the ingredients are coming in, in uh, they're coming in by order of weight. I had jumped out to the reports here for a, me a reason. If I jump into the reports and into the spreadsheet tab, it is going to rank my ingredients by weight order. So I can, I can sort it by quantity. And you saw how I put my mouse on quantity and I just clicked on it twice. Um, this the first time I clicked, it made it by smallest weight first. The second time it switched my order around so the largest weight first. So now everything is in here in rank order by weight. So I know and can verify that my ingredient list is in there in the proper order. We talked about this before, that uh, with a few exceptions in general, you are going to be listing your ingredients by weight. There are a few exceptions and you have to watch that video to remind yourself what those exceptions are. This spreadsheet's fantastic because it also, we're gonna talk about this in a, in a future video, but you can go in and take a quick look and see where the contribution of each of the nutrients is coming from. So for example, uh, let's look at the uh, the fat down here, my carrot kill coleslaw has, uh, it will round up to 30 grams of fat. And you may be saying, whoa, that's horrible. That's just ridiculous. Why would you serve that? Well, if we look at the quantity of kale and carrots here, well, they're not contributing a lot, but salad dressing is contributing 12 grams. Wait a second, those hemp seeds are contributing also 11.7 grams of fat. And you may be saying, well, wait a second, um, this is a, supposed to be a healthy salad. Well, you could argue that that hemp seed is contributing a healthy fat source. So this spreadsheet has a lot more utility than just looking at the quantity order, but let us uh, that's what I'm really looking at here right now, because what we're going to do is edit the ingredient listing. So we've got carrots, kale, salad dressing, hemp seeds and pumpkin seeds. So that should be our order in our recipe. Let's jump back to that recipe. And if we go into, if I click view label, that tab's already up. Carrots, kale, salad dressing, 
salad dressing Caesar simply dressed. What? Wait a second. That's that's not plain language. So we talked about this before. It has to be in plain common name language. And we also know that that salad dressing has components in it. So we're going to edit that out in a minute. Hemp seeds, that's fine. Pumpkin seeds roasted whole. It almost sounds like a Star Trek um, uh, Captain Picard ordering something from the uh, replicator, Earl or T, Earl Grey hot. It, 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 it's not plain language. We just want to say pumpkin seeds in there. So how do we go about editing this? So first off, we're going to go into ingredient statement. And in here, we can see that percentage contribution. Oh, isn't this useful? Uh, those of you who've been doing formulation spreadsheets, you uh, know how those percentage calculations are incredibly important for doing um, formulation work. Now we've got the percentage by weight in here. In here, you can do groupings of sugars. So we talked about how certain ingredients may be classified as a sugar or not. And so if I, if uh, I realize none of these ingredients are sugars, but if for some reason I decided that my pumpkin seeds and my hemp seeds were classified as sugars, um, I'm, I, I'm just fooling around here right now, but to show you the functionality, I'm gonna click okay. And now carrots kill sugar and it's, it's grouped my sugars together. Obviously they're not, but that's the sort of functionality that you can get in ESHA in terms of the sugars grouping. We've got the, the percentage by weight. Down here is our ingredient statement. And this is where you do need to go in and do some manual changes. And so I'm gonna click on edit. And again, for the purposes of this course, we are only going to uh, work in English. In Canada, as you know, uh, federally regulated food products do require a bilingual label. And I can't stress this enough, the, the, um, the translation that ESHA gives is lousy at best. And we'll save it, save the conversation for another uh, point in time. Normally, what goes on is in food companies, they will create an English copy and they will send it out for technical translation. And that technical translation will go through and give the proper name with the proper sense of what those ingredients sh should be in Canadian French. So we will ignore the French tab for now and focus on the English because this is a course delivered in English. So if I go into here, I have to unclick program generated ingredient statement and now I can manually edit. So we've got carrots, we've got kale, those are fine in plain language. We can say Caesar salad dressing. And then I can do bracket because again, we had that components. Now, it said simply dressed. Let's imagine I had pulled that Caesar salad dressing from my supplier. Well, let's say my supplier, well, this was the actual product that I had pulled from Esha and your supplier of that ingredient will provide you with a specification for that ingredient. We talked about it previously that you can add ingredients to your Esha database. In this case, I'm just using one that's already in there. But um, now I've got my ingredient declaration for that product. This becomes my component declaration in my coleslaw. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to take a quick note here, milk, eggs, anchovies. Those are the allergen statement on this product. So I'm going to copy and I can go back to my Esha and Caesar salad dressing bracket paste. There's all my ingredients and close bracket. Now my components are in there properly. So carrots, kale, Caesar salad dressing with all the ingredients that just came from my supplier, filtered water, canola oil, red wine vinegar, Parmesan and Romano cheese, part skin milk, cheese cultures, salt enzymes, extra virgin olive oil, egg yolk, cane sugar, salt, dried garlic, spice, mustard seeds, xanthan gum, natural flavor, anchovies. And then hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds. Those are back to my ingredients in this product. Now you may be saying, wait, a and I'm cleaning up the roasted whole. That's, that's not necessary um, in the plain language definition of this product. 
Now you may be saying, wait a second, couldn't I be modifying the order of ingredients within this component? And you are correct, I could take that spice down to the end, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to stick with what my supplier gave me and not modify it. It's, it's easier, especially for those of you who are just new at doing labeling to not do those exemptions at this point, just, just keep things as they are in terms of that component labeling. And if I click on OK, it's going to carry forward to my label copy here. And now that's cleaned up in terms of the plain language uh, declarations on the ingredients and the appropriate component labeling on that product. Now, wait a second. If I go back to my ingredient, wait a second, this is American. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with working with an American ingredient. but. I just took a look there. We just did a slide presentation on what the priority allergens are. And in the United States, mustard is not declared as a priority allergen. However, in Canada, it is. So you do need to be really diligent if you're bringing ingredients over from other jurisdictions and putting them into your product. So let's jump back to Esha here. I am going to go through and edit that in allergen statement next because it doesn't contain sesame seeds. It doesn't contain, does it contain soy? We do need to be paying very close attention to what is there. So jump out to that allergen statement. In ASHA, it goes to a default state that everything contains everything. And if you are keeping your own database for ASHA, you can make modifications. As you know, in Splashtop, it's, it's a VMware module. And so every time it's a brand new, it's as if we just downloaded it to a, a brand new computer every single time. If you have a workplace that has a static license on, um, on ESHA or you have a cloud-based license on ESHA, it's going to track these changes that you make over time. So you don't have to do this every, every, every single time. That said, pay attention every single time to make sure that everything's accurate. So we've got to go through, I'm just going to slide this over so I can read my ingredients as I'm going along. Does carrots have anything? No, I can go along and do it manually this way and think about each core ingredient, what is there or isn't there. You can see how this could become onerous and instead most of the time People will go up into this statement here and be aware of what is in there. So carrots kill doesn't have anything, but we do have a milk product. So we need to be, I'm going to actually do, I'm going to do this here. Yes, I'm going to, this will clear the allergen from the recipe and from all the ingredients used by the recipe. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. I'm going to click do not show again because it will become irritating if it comes up every single time. I'm going to actually remove everything and then click them back in. So which of these did we have in there? We noted. Did we have crustaceans? No. Did we have eggs? Yes. Egg yolk. Did we have fish? Yes. We had anchovies. Where were the anchovies? There's the anchovies, so that is a fish ingredient. Do we have gluten ingredient? Kale, Caesar salad, water, canola oil, red wine, vinegar, Parmesan and Romano cheese. Is, is there anything that's a gluten ingredient in there? No. Milk ingredients, yes. Mollusk ingredients, so clams, uh, Crust er, crustaceans is a, I was going to say lobster. Lobster is a crustacean. Crustaceans would be shrimps and lobsters and crabs. Mollusks would be clams and mussels and uh, scallops. So no on that. Yes on mustard. No on peanut. No on sesame seeds. No on shellfish. We have fish, but we don't have shellfish. Do we have soy in there? So our oil source, carrots, kale, Caesar salad dressing, canola oil. So not soy, red wine vinegar, Parmesan and Reggiano cheese, or Romano cheese, pardon me. 
Skim milk, cheese cultures, salt, enzymes, olive oil, egg yolk, cane sugar. You do need to be super diligent and not miss something. And the more ingredients you have, the more you've got to pay attention. So shellfish, no. Soy, no. Tree nuts, no. Wheat, no. And we click on OK. And in this case, we don't need to be going in. You, you could, on that contain statement, say contains egg, fish, anchovies, milk, mustard. But fish is sufficient in this case. So we're able to make those sorts of quick um, edits to the list. And we do need to be super diligent to make sure that we haven't forgotten one of the allergens or we've overlooked it. Now, let's say, let's jump back out to our supplier here, and we've got this uh, T. Marzetti Simply Dress sal Caesar Salad Dressing, and while it didn't contain it in the list, let's say it has a contain, or may contains, um, oh gee, what would be a may contains? May contains wheat. Maybe they have a salad line and they're making crouton salad and the croutons potentially cross contaminated the salad dressing line. I know Marzetti happens to be a quite large company and so they shouldn't be making croutons in the same facility. But let's just imagine that our salad dressing has a may contains gluten on it. May contains wheat. Jump back to splash top here. We can jump into that allergen statement, go into edit, and we can do we can do in this program generated additional allergen statement may contain wheat gluten. Okay. Okay. There we go. And this becomes the technical copy that you send out to your graphic designer so that they can create a beautiful label for your packaging. So that's not too difficult, but you, I can't stress this enough. Do take the time and really cross-reference time and time again to make sure that you've got everything that is supposed to be in your allergen statement and you haven't forgotten something. Okay, so I'm not going to shut my actually done because I'm going to make a couple more videos here but when you are all done do make sure to disconnect your Esha and we will talk to you again real soon with some more videos on labeling. Take care.